In today's high-tech world, we're constantly being bombarded with the message that we are not enough and that we'll be happy if we just have more. It's constant ads and commercials and infomercials and sponsorships telling us that if we have the perfect skincare routine, then we'll be beautiful, and if we have the perfect wardrobe, then we'll fit in, and if we have the perfect home, then we will be happy. And it couldn't be further from the truth. A recent survey done 2024 revealed that 56% of Americans don't have enough money in their accounts to cover an unexpected $1,000 expense. And so if this is you, I'm gonna share with you 15 ways to save more money easily. A lot of these things are things that you can just set once and that way you don't have to continuously think about it, making it more of a habit to save money. But make sure you stick for the bonus one at the end because truly that is the one that has changed the most when it comes to how I manage my money and really changing my mindset around money. So don't miss that one. Okay, so first step is to remove your cards, log out of your accounts, and delete any apps that cause you to spend a little bit too much money. At one point in time, for me, this was Target. And so what I had to do is I removed the card because a lot of apps that you have, just the fact that you have the card easily accessible makes it so much easier for you to not actually have to think about it. And if for you, spending is something that you do impulsively or something that you do for fun, and it's something that is kind of like a habit for you, then it will be a lot easier once you've actually removed those cards because now you have to actually go and walk to your bag and actually get the card out and type in those numbers and log into the account. And so by doing this, you're just kind of cutting down that one step that makes you kind of have to think about it. Number two is to get only the service that you need for your utilities. This is one of those things that you just kind of set it and, and forget about it because a lot of the times we get a service and then we forget to actually see what we're actually paying for. And I had to do this and I found three things that I was paying for that I didn't need to. So for example, we were paying $10 a month for a Wi-Fi router for our internet service and I didn't realize that we were being charged that when we had our own Wi-Fi router. I also was paying $5 for a hotspot that I never actually needed. And then two, I was paying for like the faster internet, I guess the more gigabytes of faster speed internet, when really most of the time we're actually using our Wi-Fi here at home. So it was like a lot of different things that I'm like, why was I paying for all this stuff? Not only did I save that one month, but then the next month and then the next month, like you can really save hundreds, even thousands of dollars through the accumulation of saving every single month. So make sure you check on your utilities. Number three is to get a hobby. I know it might sound kind of counterintuitive because hobbies can kind of be more expensive sometimes, but if you feel like for you, you don't have any hobbies, you feel like you don't have anything that you're good at, or you're just kind of bored and then you go shopping because shopping is fun or it kind of resolves your boredom problem, then you really need to find yourself some other hobby. Maybe try coloring, maybe try hiking, try swimming, try doing something and just kind of see what it is that you enjoy doing. I know that for me personally, when I had a shopping addiction and I really struggled, it tended to be when I was bored, it tended to be because I felt lonely, it tended to be because I felt like I needed something because I felt like I didn't have any skills, I wasn't good at anything, and I needed shopping because that was fun, that was easy, that I didn't have to have any particular skill or ability in order to do that. So if this is you and you can relate in any way, find different things, try different things. So if for you, shopping is something you do for fun, find yourself another hobby. Number four is to quit buying shopping treats. This is one that I always felt very passionate about because my parents, right or wrong, they would always like whoop me if I asked for anything when we were at the store. So I guess it was their message of telling me like, you should be happy with what you have and the fact that we're actually buying you something. And just because we're taking you out to the store doesn't mean that you like deserve something. And my husband, when we were first dating, would constantly like ask me if we were at a gas station, oh, do you, do you want a snack or do you want this? And I'd be like, stop it. Like, why? <laughs> I didn't actually get the idea. I mean, I know he was trying to be nice, but to me, it seemed like you're trying to reward yourself for the fact that you went to the gas station or reward you yourself for the fact that you went to go purchase something else by buying this little snack or this little treat. And it seems like it's not that important, but when you do that constantly, it adds up. And all those little things that they have by the cashier register is called suggestive sale because it's something that you didn't plan on buying, but they have it there just as a suggestion. Like, hey, like, like look at all this pretty stuff, all these little candies and magazines. Like, don't you want it? You want it, come on. But you didn't plan on buying them. Number five is one that I absolutely love and it is to buy the reusable option instead of the disposable. And of course it can help support the planet because you're not constantly like buying things over and over and over again. It can save you space. Like for example, I have menstrual pads and a menstrual cup. Instead of having these packs of those items, I have this small little pouch and I don't have to constantly be replacing these things. Also, it saves me with time. I don't have to go to the store to go there and back. And even if I were to have them like mailed to me, for example, I don't have to deal 
deal with the boxes and having to toss those. When you have reusable items, not only does it save you money, but it saves you time, it saves the environment. I just think all over, it's just a win-win-win. Look through every single item that you're constantly disposing and see, is there a reusable option for that? And opt for the reusable. You will save so much money this way. And if you're needing some ideas, I do have a separate video all on that. It is one of my older videos, so maybe it's a little bit cringy, but still the information is there in case you need it. Number six, I am a big advocate for this one. It's to simplify your personal care routine. I feel like constantly, especially women, we are so targeted that we need this like 10 step skincare routine. And truthfully, I have tried a lot of different things. Like when I was around 19, 20 years old, I had the eye cream serums and I had all these sorts of like different face serums, all these things that supposedly were going to make me more beautiful. And I don't know what it is that I was necessarily going for. I think I was just falling for that pressure, falling for that advertising, falling for the social media, saying that I needed these things. And I honestly, I feel like they did nothing for me. Like the thing that did the most for me was truthfully the fact that I did like a laser on my face and I removed 42 moles. And then after that, I started using sunscreen every day. And then just, that's it, like sunscreen. I don't have this like 10 step skincare routine anymore. And truthfully, my skin has improved so much just by simplifying it and removing all the toxic junk and making sure that I have like non-toxic stuff. I feel like simpler is a whole lot better. And sometimes you might think that it's amazing, but all of those toxic ingredients are just kind of like working together against your face. And then you have no idea why your skin is flaring out because it's angry by all the stuff you're piling on top of it. So find those things that work for you. And just because somebody else has this three step or five step or seven step skincare routine doesn't mean that that necessarily works for you. Number seven is a simple one. It's to DIY your gifts and give experience gifts. This can often get a bad rep, but everybody has different ways of expressing and perceiving love. And if you've never heard of the five love languages, I definitely recommend Gary Chapman's book. This book has definitely helped me because it helped me to realize what love language I have and how my family members and my friends want to receive love. I had been a very, very bad gift receiver. I'm getting better at that. But acknowledging that and recognizing that has helped me to also know that other people don't necessarily want to be gifted things. Maybe they want you to do something. Maybe they want a handwritten letter. Maybe they want you to actually go with them somewhere. So a lot of times you don't have to necessarily get somebody the most expensive thing. You can make gifts by yourself. And that can also be an expression of love because you took the time to do that. Number eight is to buy better quality. I can't tell you the number of times I've tried to save money and then ended up spending a lot more money because the thing that I tried to buy cheaply ended up breaking, ended up not working, and then I still had to buy the more expensive option. So just buy better quality the first time and that way you'll avoid buying the cheap stuff over and over and over again. Number nine is to rent or borrow whenever possible. I think this also ties in with the gift thing thing because I, was, I tell you, I was a horrible receiver. I was not good at receiving things and so I was was not good at asking for help. I was not good at admitting when I needed something. And the more I've been able to do that, the more I've seen that my friends and my family also start to have that confidence to go to me when they need help. But I think it can kind of help you get closer to the people that you value and it can kind of help you gain that tribe. Because back in the day, I feel like people borrowed a whole lot more and they would kind of share with each other. And so it can not only help you to save money, but also for you to reciprocate that with other people and kind of just gain that tribe of yours if you don't feel like you already have one. And then too, as far as renting, you can rent so many different things. If you're wanting to get a job done in your lawn, like you don't have to actually go out and buy these big machinery, you can rent that. And I just don't see a purpose in buying this like super big expense that you're never gonna actually use again. And so even with my wedding dress, like I paid 280 bucks for it and then I got rid of it. For me, the stuff is not what matters. It is the family, it is the bonds, it is the relationships. So anytime I can rent or borrow, I will definitely go for those avenues avenues if it's not something that I'm going to be using often. Number 10, if there is a major purchase that you're wanting to make, try to find a way to make it an investment. So for example, with our wedding, my husband and I, when we got married, I did not want to pay a photographer. I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't do those things, but for me, I did not want to pay the amount of money to somebody else that would take photos when my family could very well just like snap photos and send them to me. And what I did was I bought a nice camera. So I bought a Sony camera that I'm now like using, I'm using this setup in order to be able to make videos. And so that really, that investment that I paid instead of paying a photographer, I bought it myself a professional camera. And then with that professional camera, I'm now making videos. So find a way to be able to make your expenses, make you money, 
An example for my husband is that he has lots of different tools for making furniture. He can actually make things that he can sell in order to really basically pay off those tools. Number 11 is to cut cable and show subscriptions. I feel like you've probably heard this before, but the thing is that time is your biggest asset. And again, that advertising is everywhere, everywhere. You really have to be very careful of the things that you're consuming if you're wanting to change the way you view money. Because oftentimes, even like even with minimalist channels, for example, I had to unsubscribe from this minimalist YouTuber because it seemed like every single video she had, she had some sort of sponsorship. And I'm not against sponsorships, like we all gotta make money, right? But the thing is, I felt like I was bombarded. Like every single video, mind you, this is like a minimalist channel. This is supposed to tell me that I'm, I'm enough and you know, I don't need all these things that was constantly sharing me with something that I needed to buy, that I should go buy this, that I should go buy that. And so I had to unsubscribe from that. So just be very, very mindful. It doesn't matter what kind of channel, what kind of topic you're actually watching, just be very cautious. What is the underlying message? And are you constantly being bombarded with the idea that you need more? Not only will it save you money because you're not actually spending money on those things, but then you will also start to change your mindset around money, saving you even more. Number 12 is to DIY, DIY, DIY. This will save you so much money because sometimes companies are charging you for their labor time when you could actually do it for yourself. So I can give you an example of a gutter service that wanted to replace our gutters. And instead of actually paying them for this huge quote, we actually are able to do it ourselves and we spent so much less money. We could have that with a much reduced price because we weren't paying this company, this entity that had to pay their insurances and all these other things. Contact your utility companies and ask for a discount. And if they're still not wanting to give you a discount, actually lay it out there, like find another company that maybe will charge you less and say that you're gonna cancel. I did this with my internet service when after a while they had like upped up the price and I found a different company that was a lot cheaper. And I told them I'm gonna cancel. And honestly what they did is they gave me a free phone line for an entire year and they also like cut down the phone bill so which was still cheaper than the other company and they cut down my internet bill. So all together, I ended up saving a lot of money every single month for an entire year and then the next year after that. So worth a try. Number 14, just a personal pet peeve of mine, don't buy dry clean only clothes. For one thing, of course, they cost money to actually get them cleaned and take care of them. But then too, you have to drive there, drive back, or if not, you're paying for delivery services. Like to me, it's just not worth it. It's not only the money that you're spending, but the time that you're spending on these things. And so I would just rather avoid it all together. And lastly, number 15 is to simplify your meals and have four to five meals that you can cook with your eyes closed. I mean, not really with your eyes closed, I'm exaggerating here, but really just to have a small amount of recipes that you can make in really quick time and you know, and you constantly have the ingredients. And that way, when you're kind of going through that hectic rush and you're really busy and you're wondering, oh my gosh, what are we gonna eat? It can be super easy just to pull something out, pull some ingredients together and have a meal quickly made. Because honestly, sometimes we just fall for buying the fast food and buying the quicker option because we think that we're saving time and we think it's going to be the more efficient option. But really like when you're driving to, you're waiting for it, you're bringing it back, you're having to toss all these like disposable items and then you're having to like manage with their garbage. Like it's honestly sometimes more of a hassle for me, truly. And my bonus tip for sticking to the end is to curate your social media. Social media, honestly, I think is one of the biggest culprits for why we tend to fall for that consumerist trap because a lot of advertising comes from social media, even within minimalist channels like the one that I have here because we're watching ads, because we're being bombarded with sponsorships, because we're seeing the clothes that our favorite YouTuber has that maybe now we want or the items and the skincare routine that they have. All of those things that we are constantly consuming can make us feel like we are not enough, like we don't have enough. And so make sure that you're watching things that are motivating you to save money, that are telling you, you have enough. You are perfect just the way you are. You don't need all these other things in order to make you happy. So curating your media will really help to change that mindset. And when you change that mindset around money, then everything will change for you. Because now all of a sudden you will go to the mall and you won't feel like you need all of those shiny new objects. You will feel content just the way you are. So make sure you watch the things that you're, well, not watch, but like actually be conscious of the things that you are watching. And that will help a lot towards changing your mindset around money. So that's it for these tips. I hope that they've been helpful for you and be sure to subscribe so you won't miss when I post a new video because I definitely have a lot more money saving tips to come. And especially when it comes to children and families because I feel like this is an area where a lot of people think that kids have to be super expensive. And truly, I feel like if we have it, a minimalist approach to it, 
It doesn't have to be that way. So be sure to stick around for those videos. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.